Hello YouTube! During quarantine, I have been watching a ton of Rachel Maxey's videos, and a couple months ago she made a Coraline doll of herself, and that looks super fun, and just such a neat Halloween-y sort of craft, and so that's what I'm gonna do today. Also, look at my cat. <laughs> my floor's a mess. Don't worry about that, just pay attention to this baby. Ooh, she's being so sweet. Boop, boop, boop. First thing I'm gonna do is draw out a design and make a pattern for myself so I know what size to make everything and yeah, let's just dive right in. So first I took measuring tape and marked 10 inches. I figured that would be a good size for the doll and then from there I just drew the pattern that I wanted. Alright, so this is the sketch that I'm going to base my doll off of. The next step is to make a armature out of wire. For this I use 16 gauge wire, but anything that is sturdy enough to hold up the weight of the head of the doll should be fine. And the sketch was super handy to use as a guideline for what size I should make everything. Once that was all completed, I took some foil to fill in the shape of her head to get ready to start sculpting her face. I used polymer clay for this and just tried to roll it out to wrap it around the foil for the head. And then from there I just started smoothing things out the best I could. I didn't have any tools or anything, so I just did what I could with my fingers. Once I got her features all figured out and looking how I wanted, this is what she looked like. She's still a little lumpy on the back of her head, but I knew I would cover that with the hair anyway, so I wasn't too worried about it. Then I just stuck her in the oven. Then using the pattern I made earlier, I traced her body out on some fabric and then cut it out, making sure I left enough room for seam allowance. Once that was all sewn together, I stuffed her with some fluff and just gave her a bit of girth and once that was all done, I sewed the top up and this is what she looked like. Next, I just gave her some color. Once her face was painted on, it was then time to add her hair. I just took some rubber cement and painted it on her head and then I just stuck the hair onto the glue from there. This was actually really satisfying to do, adding each hair and just making it look all nice and neat. I really like this part. Then I just gave her hair a trim because although I have not been to a hairdresser in months, my hair hasn't grown that long quite yet. Next 
Next, I cut out the pattern for her clothes and then added some stripes with acrylic paint so it could match a shirt that I also had. Then I sewed her clothes together and they were looking so stinking cute. I love tiny clothes. <laughs> and then I just hand stitched the ends so they wouldn't fray, hopefully, later on. And she was looking all adorable in her new overalls and shirt. And finally, I gave her her button eyes. Before gluing them on, I just made sure I marked where I wanted to put the buttons, that way I didn't miss the spot when I was actually gluing them on. And with that, she was all finished. She's finished. Here we are all matching. I think she turned out really cute and a little bit creepy. The matching outfits I think adds to the creepiness. The fact that she is adjustable and can sit makes her easy to like display. If I so choose. I love Coraline and getting to make myself as a little Coraline doll was super, super fun. Now I have this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. But it's here in my house, hopefully not cursed. This was super fun, I totally recommend doing it. It is a multiple day project though. I thought I could get this done in one day, but it took me like two days in fact. And yeah, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time, bye. You hear her purring? Huh. Hi, hey, baby. Oh. Oh, she <laughs> Hey. How are you? You want to say hello? Oh, oh my goodness. Good girl. Yeah? Is that all? <laughs>